Mm -hmm. There I am. Hello, hello. Oops, wrong way. That's better. Hello, everybody. We are live here. Mm. It's not time to start, though. Still have like uh, seven minutes. Whew. <sighs> I'm gonna get settled in here. Um, let's see. I want to adjust this a little bit better. <laughs> kind of sitting on the floor at the moment. And uh, I want to fix that and sit on this stool instead. There we go. Am I still in the picture? Not quite. Okay, this is what needs work. <laughs> Some of your destinations have errors. Really? We got to be kidding. Edit, remove, no, I don't want to edit. Um, bear with me, please, while I... Oh, yeah, never mind. Um, I'll just have to run it later. I don't know why, um, why this platform that I use Keeps wanting to um, cancel out. Oops, no, wrong way. Keeps wanting to cancel out Facebook. I don't like that either because I've got a lot of followers on Facebook. Um, YouTube always runs fine, and so does um, Twitter, as far as I know. But uh, such is life. You do what we got to do. Yes, indeed. Okay, my stool's too high. I may end up sitting on the floor anyway. But we'll see. We'll see. I could just put stuff on my lap and you could see it that way. Right? Yep, that's true. Yeah, okay. Anyway, we still have like uh, five more minutes. I hope everybody's day is going well. Um, Mine is so far. Here I am getting ready to uh, talk about my favorite pastime, my uh, my favorite craft, my uh, my busy work. I guess you could call it. I find that um, I am working with yarn. I'm knitting or crocheting a lot while I'm watching. TV while I'm, you know, looking at the screen, watching movies or whatever. It's, you know, I'll be watching and sitting there keeping my hands busy. It's, you know, not a bad deal, I suppose. You know what? I think I want to raise this up a little bit more. That might be better. Yeah. Shall return. Hold that. Oh, very good. All right, here we go. Here is my um, handy dandy um, little extender here. I just have to bear with me for a second while I am going to disconnect this bottom holder and screw this one in its place. Okay. Here we go. Okay. And then put it back on the stand. And that should pump it up some. So it's more level with um, my face. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Is this better? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yay, me. Oh, and I've got nobody on here, as far as I can tell. <laughs> Nobody's live. Nobody's coming to visit me today, learn how to do my favorite crafts. Ah, I'm disappointed. But that's okay. Um, perhaps everybody will catch it later. Mm -hmm. See me later, haters. <laughs> that might... Um, do 
a lot of people watch after the fact anyway, which is kind of a neat thing. We didn't, I didn't have that option um, when I first started doing uh, visual tours. Everything just kind of appeared on Hago. And if you didn't catch it live, well, then you didn't catch it <laughs> pretty much. But now doing it on my own, going through um, YouTube and Facebook and um, YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, uh, I can, you know, kind of um, control what happens with it. You know, I can, I can download it. I can um, record it. I can run it again later. There, I have um, several options with this platform. So that's a good thing. Uh, we still have, let's see, two minutes till showtime. Two minutes till showtime. That um, <laughs> long, long ago, when there were more of them, more drive-in theaters, I don't even know if if some of my audience even has had the opportunity to go to a drive-in theater. Uh, there's something that was popular way back in the past before the digital age before computers even where you drove your car to a theater to a <laughs> a big old outdoor lot actually it had a humongous screen and it had um the uh, uh posts with speakers on them and you would take the speaker off and put it in your driver's side car window and roll it up and you sit in your car and you watch a movie. And it was pretty, pretty, uh, a pretty cool thing to do, like, you know, with friends or, you know, dates or family. It was a fun thing. There are still a few left. There's one here in the Baltimore area still, but uh, anyway, they in, in between they show several movies and oh, hello Dorley. Oh my goodness. Good to see you. Wow. All right. How are you? Oh, I wondered what happened to you. I've been missing you. I haven't seen you for a while. So cool. Cool. I'm glad you're here. So actually, cool. It's time to start. 12 noon, high noon here in good old Baltimore. Um, Dorley, is your weather good there? Please show brands and amounts of material you're using. Okay, I can definitely do that. All right. Um, in fact, well, first of all, there's several things that, um, oh, you couldn't find, oh, oh. Well, I have to, uh, we'll have to figure something out. That's all. Um, I'm on Facebook and I'm on YouTube under the Bay Lady. So, you know, but anyway, um, so what I'm going to show is working with looms. You can make so many different things. It's amazing. Um, and it's easy as well. Let me show you some of the products that you can make with just a couple of plastic looms. This little hat and this hat. The hats, um, for the hats, I use this yarn. Okay. It is, um, let's see. This is ten and a half ounces. It is um, the um, the bulk is number six, super bulky, number six. And this is what this is the um, this is the yarn that made this these hats, these type of hats. Um, it what did I say it was? Um, uh, ten. Ten, oh, it's ten and a half ounces. Let's see. Okay, this is two hundred and twenty yards. Okay, two hundred and twenty yards. You can get two hats out of this. Okay, two hundred and twenty yards, and it will yield two hats. Okay, 
that's falling apart there. So, and you can do different things with the hats. Um, I, I added in a different color towards the end of that one, much like you would when you're um, knitting or crocheting. The other thing that you can make, oh, oh let me show you, though. those were made with this loom, the orange loom. The, the looms come in sets, actually, different sizes. I'll show you better in a second, but um, trying to get the copy of the book. Mm -hmm. I don't have one. Hmm. And I thought I had um I thought I had a copy of the um the wrapper that these came in, um, but I don't. I've kind of had them for a while, <laughs> I suppose. But uh they're all different sizes. There's a, let's see, this one too. So this was a set and they're called knitting looms. Okay. And I don't have the brand. I wish I did. But I don't. Um, anyway, so this small one, okay, this made the baby booties. Okay, these cute little booties. Let me show you. Okay. And it's just, uh, it, it's, you can see how it fit right in there. Um, all I did was like make a, <laughs> it's like a mini doll cap, right? You can, you can make a little hat for your doll. Well, instead, I strung some ribbon through it and made it a booty, a baby's booty. Uh, with haven't made anything with this one. This one, I've made hats, baby hats, okay? It, it's it's um, this hat, right, but smaller, baby hat. Um, those hats, these are made with this size, the orange um, hoop, okay? 35 degree, oh my goodness. Wow, it's chilly there, really. Celsius, huh? Oh uh, well, it's um, it's supposed to be like 70, 71, 72 degrees here Fahrenheit. So um, it's going to be muggy, hot and muggy as always. So um, oh this this um purse bag. There you go. This was also made with the um, orange hoop that I made the adult hats with. It also made this. All I did was make it longer, <laughs> twice as long, right? Let me put these over here, twice as long. And um, at the top, and I, I finished it off like I would a hat, but then I made this braided um, uh, yarn thing and, and threaded it through. And so it made um, a, a way to close the, the bag, the purse. And then I just made a tassel and just put it on the bottom for, um, I don't know, effect, <laughs> what, what have you. Okay. Now, other things that you're looking at, okay, these hats up here, uh, well, the hats up top there, why not? <laughs> Let me fix this. Okay, the hats that you see up here, okay, again, we're all made with the orange loom. Now, the scarves um, are made the same way, but with a different loom. Which is where is it? Up here. Okay. This loom. This loom is actually fun. It lets you be a little uh, somewhat creative with it too. Um, with this loom, 
I made this scarf. Okay. And how I did it was just running down one side. I didn't use the whole loom. I just used one end and I just, um, I went like looped it on, went back, just kind of back and forth until I got the length I wanted. And then I finished it off and put fringes on it. Okay. This one, this scarf, is kind of a, a lacier effect. That was made with this, this bigger loom which produces bigger stitches. So this can like, this is kind of like cool. It's kind of stretchy. So you can like, you can stretch it out and have it real long, but you could also like open it up a little bit too, if you wanted to like put it on your shoulder or something like that. This is a um, shawl that I need. And where's it? This is a shawl. And I made it the same way, except that I kept going around. All right. I did. No, okay. Notice there's um, um, a, a pin on either end besides the center. So what I did to make the Scott make the shawl was I used these stitches here. I used these pegs, used this one, the center one, and then this side. And then I stopped and I reversed and reversed. And I kept going around like that. So the shawl is double the size of the scarf. So that was uh, fairly, you know, simple to make. So today I want to, I want to show you. I'm trying to think of what I, what it is I want to do. Okay, I want this. Actually, this one. I'm going to do a small, um, a small loom so I can, um show you how to start and how to finish oops uh, got this all tangled up there we go okay so to start all of these the um um this the rectangle the long looms had at either end um a little knob sticking up so that um you could, you know, you you could wrap it. You could you could make this whole thing circular. If I mean, if you did the whole thing, then you'd have a circular, stretchy kind of scarf. Maybe if you leave it open. Um. Anyway, these are markers on the side to help you gauge what you're doing. So on um the round ones, you will find markers also. Only one, <laughs> and it's right here. And so that is like your starting point. So from here, you would start your work so that you could, you know, keep track of how many, you know, rows with um, um, that to guide you. So to start, gonna make just a half knot. Whoops. <laughs> Let me see here when that. Oh, let me see if I can get this a little closer. Okay. Please show the yarn's label. Okay. Um, it's right here. It is, it is by Bernat, B-E-R-N-A-T. Um, yarn inspirations by Burnett and it's for blankets. It'll say blanket on it. You want the blanket because it's really, really soft and thick and it makes those hats really, really soft and thick. Okay. Crocheting and knitting channel. Oh, cool. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad I will do the same. 
<laughs> Definitely. Good to meet you, Ashley. Okay, so Dorley, back to Dorley here. Um, also, the yarn, they they're rated according to bulk, okay? And this one is super bulk number six. Oh, Ashley, you know what? Oh, wow, cool beans. Okay, definitely, I will. Um, Ashley, help me out here, actually. I'm talking to Dorley. She lives in Israel. And she really wants to make these knit, do these knitting looms, and she can't find the material anywhere. Um, it's hard for her to get it. She hasn't been able to yet, and I know she's probably been trying a good year. <laughs> I know for sure. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm showing her the um, labels of the yarn that I'm using for this particular project. Okay, and it's um, let's see, what was it? Two hundred and twenty yards. And as I said, you could get two hats out of this easy. So, oh, let me go back to this. You're in Minnesota. Okay, I'm in Baltimore. I'm in Baltimore. That's really cool. I'm, I'm going to check you out um, um, when I get done here. That's great. Maybe we can even hook up and do something. I don't know. I love doing crafts. I basic I do um um visual tours like um like I'm like tomorrow I'll be at the Renaissance Festival here in uh near Annapolis. So I do kind of stuff like that. But I love my arts and crafts. So here we are <laughs> doing it. Okay, so all right, I am going to fasten this on here like so. Oh, and I have a tool with your looms comes this handy dandy little hook that helps you make um, your stitches uh, go much easier for sure. Okay, so first off. Oops, I'm getting all tangled, come on now. All right, and I don't want it that way either. Oops, okay, I want it coming from the top. All right, all right, so I am starting, I always start on the first peg to the left of this little knob here so this knob is going to be the starting row okay so to get to get the first row in it's just a matter of um going around each um, peg like so all you're doing is wrapping it you're going um counter clockwise is it I think so. This is awkward <laughs> trying to do this. But as you can see, I, I'm just just wrapping and I'm going counterclockwise like so. Oops. And you don't want to um, you don't want to do them extremely tight, okay? You want them to be somewhat loose so you have some wiggle room, literally, to um, maneuver the next row of stitches in. Okay, so there, okay, there I've gone all the way around. Oops, this way. There you go, thanks. I know Dorley, I'm... <laughs> I'm having issues here. This is so awkward because anyway, never mind. <laughs> so this is done. Okay, that's the first, that's the first row. That's your basic row. All right. Now we're gonna push these stitches down a little bit from the top of the peg, maybe about halfway, because we don't want them um, popping off. And um we don't want them too far down, it just makes it harder. Okay, so 
right, here's where I ended. So now I am going to come around again and I wrap it. Okay. The second row. Okay, second row of wrapping. Wish I could get this better. Okay. Yeah. And this there. Okay, and this to the peg. One more. All right. Okay, so now just scoot these down a little bit here so they don't pop off. Okay, so now you've got two rows, right? Well, now we're going to make it into one, okay? This is how we do our stitches, so simple. So here's the peg, here's where we ended, here's where we started. So we're going to start at the beginning again. And you'll notice there's a, um, oh my goodness, a little groove, right? A little groove there. That is for your tool, which is, um, just a hook, a little hook with a sharp pokey end there. And it just slides into that groove. And actually, the pegs also have a groove going up the center. So it just slides one up and you pull that stitch over. Now that's locked in place. I don't have to hang on to my uh, yarn anymore because that stitch kept it from unraveling along the way. So now, let's see, is it better to do it this way or this way? Um, or that, no, that's not going to work. Anyway, um, we're just taking, uh oh, hold on. Hold on, master. <laughs> All right, get back over there, you. Okay. Oops. Okay. I pulled too much off, right? Okay, so we're going to, oops. <clears throat> eh. Oops. Uh, luckily, this is easy fixing. <laughs> Thank goodness, right? Thank goodness for that. Mm. Just get you back on over here. Thank you very much. All right. So, as I was saying, we go up and over. Whoops. Holy day. What is going on here with my yarn? How did that get loose? Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. All right. So, up and over. Up. And over, up, and over. So very uh, easy. It's it's just two steps, right? It's wrap and flip, <laughs> wrap and flip. We're on the flip side right now, and we're just flipping that bottom stitch over the second one, just like so. Kind of like um, like they're. Uh, playing leapfrog. Oh, really? Your dental hygiene? Is, where did she get hers? Do, do you know? I just, uh, I don't know. It seems to me that one of these big um, conglomerates here in the U.S., one of these big craft stores, of which we have several, right? Um, Hobby Lobby, um, AC Moore, um, there, I mean, there are so many craft Michaels. It's a shame that, um, you know, you, you they can't send it to you. But uh, from what I understand, though, um, postage, the 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 cost of postage, the the cost of um, shipping things 
has like gone through the roof. It, it's like out of control. So um, I don't know what to think anymore, really. Okay, so we've made a full um, row there. We combine those two. Now you have a choice as to how you want to do this, which may. Oh, the tool with the blue handle. Okay. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. Dory, it does look like a dental tool, doesn't it? Oh, my goodness. That is so funny. I love it. <laughs> okay. Um, you, have two, you, you have two options here, okay? You can go and wrap like so you know just like we've been doing right just wrap the whole thing and then come back and flip or your other option is to wrap and flip wrap and flip like instead of going around instead of going around and coming back you're just touching it once and doing two steps at the same time. So, you know, you're you're wrapping and flipping. Now it's your choice. Um in the um uh in the instructions that comes with the looms, it tells you to go all the way around and wrap and then come back and flip each one. Personally, myself, I rather do it this way because doing it the other way I've had um, stitches pop off like too often you know way, way too often so this way you know as soon as you do that one flip you've locked that whole row into place you know but when you're just going around like this right nothing's locked so it's real easy for it to come off and it'll do it at the most inopportune time. Like there's a good time, but still. Anywho. So here we go. And I'm going to do um, a few rows and then I'll show you how to take it off. So I'm going to do um, I'm going to do a craft coming up soon. Um, uh, yeah, a, a craft tour coming up soon to make the chunky blankets. Chunky blankets are really neat. Um, I've made several. And you don't need any tools for that. Oh, Dory, you don't need any tools for chunky blankets. You just, but you need to be able to get the chunky um, wool, the chunky yarn. I'll show you that in a bit. Let me keep going with this. I want to make a couple more rows. Um, I guess, oh, one of the other things that you can make with this particular loom is um, ear warmers, right? Headbands, you know, ear warmers like for skiing and stuff. This is made with a regular average yarn, not anything special. I just kind of liked it, but uh, it works really well. Okay. Hey. okay, so like so. There you go. <laughs> I know I look ridiculous. I'm not a hat person, though I try to be. <laughs> All right, back to my lupin. Um, Oh, they also have available, um, they have a mechanical loom that, um, I say mechanical because you crank it. <laughs> you for, First, you, you put your, your yarn on it. It's, it's ran like this. And you put the um, yarn on it the same way we started this. But then instead of having to go back and do this, the flipping part, you turn the handle, you crank it, and it just keeps on stitching for you. Now, the problem there is when you drop a stitch. <laughs> um, it's really hard to fix. 
Uh, and the other thing is you can't use this thick yarn either. You have to use general, you know, normal medium weight yarn uh, because this is too thick and it'll jam it. But that was, it, it's a pretty nice little thing. I've used it a couple times, a few times really. It uh, generates a different type of stitch, but you can make hats with it. and basically anything that you can make with these you can make with the uh, mechanical loom <laughs> and these are knitting looms which i always they're called knitting looms i always thought they should be called crochet looms because to me this seems more like crochet right because um because with with knitting you've got the two needles right crochet is only ever one needle and what is this right <laughs> one needle but they're knitting looms so they'll do like they say yes indeed you know i might um i might have to go to one of the craft stores and and or contact them at some point um and see how you would go about getting yarn overseas getting it sent there or you know what i i, I will do some investigating on that um Dorley, you can find me on um well i'm on i'm on i'm on youtube Right. Um, if, can you send messages on YouTube? I don't know. Do they have like private messages like Facebook does? I don't know. Um, um, but um, Dorley, if you if you go on my YouTube page, um, I have like like um, there are some links there on my profile. And I think one of them might be my, um, I think my email address is on there. If you want to email me, then I'll have yours. And um, we'll see what we can find out, what we can do to get you some yarn and uh, some looms. I don't mind that at all. So, yeah, go, go to my, um, yeah, it'll be on there, my email address. And that that's the most, like, um, um private way for us to communicate rather than you know posting stuff for the world to see <laughs> so i don't like putting my business out there too much i'm not one of those people that go on social media and get all righteous and judgmental and and uh you know put people down and mm -mm, not me I I like it so I can post pictures. <laughs> you found me today? Okay, awesome. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Okay, well, then when you're ready, um, drop me an email. And I'll have your address and I'll see. We'll, we'll try to figure something out. Okay, I don't mind that at all. You know, you know what's interesting? Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. You know what's interesting? I did, I just, just recently, started doing um um uh, live to well, live tours i mean in-person tours for a company in europe and so you know they they i i take tourists international tourists and show them around um baltimore's inner harbor it's like their big tourist hub well earlier this week i had a family from israel um a uh, husband, wife, and um, grown son. Oh God, they were so much fun. We had a ball. <laughs> really, it, it was. Uh, they were very, uh, very friendly, and and all. It was not that I wouldn't expect them to, but it's just coincidental because I've never met anyone from Israel before, and you know, it just happened this week, and of course, except for you, and and now here you are. So it's all good. <laughs> It is all good. So, oh, I am still, 
I want to have let it have a little bit of substance here. <laughs> I might I might use it as um, an ear warmer for my little doll over there, right? My little baby doll, <laughs> my my model, right? She models my um, my little hats and the booties. And oh, in the in the summertime, except I didn't do it this year. I make little um, little baby bonnets, like for new newborns. Like they're actually, it's an Irish thing. It's called um, oh God, what is it called? It's it's like baby bonnets that you make out of a lady's um, handkerchief. You know, a, a, a like a lacy handkerchief or something like that. And and there's a way that you make it into an infant spot bonnet so like the bonnet could be used for you know like um, a christening something like maybe a godmother you know would give a baby or whatever and then um after that you put it away and when that baby on her wedding day walks down that aisle that little bonnet is now a handkerchief you snip snip and take out a couple stitches and she has something old to carry so it's kind of a nice little thing but anyway i make those and i haven't done a video yet or a live thing with those but i should but that's that's my model for uh for my uh baby bonnets <laughs> Also make these other little things out of um, out of handkerchiefs. They're called church dolls, and um, they were they were first made in like during the Civil War here in this country in the eighteen like fifties and sixties, and they were made totally out of um, a handkerchief, just um, you know tied a certain way with ribbons or whatever, and they were given to little girls to play with when the family was in church and when the if the little child or whatever would you drop the doll instead of like causing a commotion making noise it would wouldn't make a sound because it was all made of cloth so i um i have that as well that i haven't done anything with but i will <laughs> i will introduce it one day for sure. Tomorrow I am going to the 47th annual Maryland Renaissance Festival. I love the, no, is it the 47th or the 71st? Oh, I don't know, 47th, I suppose. Anyway, I've probably been to every one of them. That's one of my most favorite things to do. And so tomorrow, um, I think I have it for 1230. I'm going to do a live stream from there. Um, it should be on, well, it'll be on YouTube and um, Twitter. And it's supposed to be on Facebook, but for some reason, I'm having issues with Facebook. It's not, it's telling me it's not streaming. So I'll have to see. I may have to um, post it on Facebook when I'm done here. So I have to check and see what's going on with that. <laughs> okay, this is coming, moving quite, moving along as you can see here. Here is what these stitches look like. I like using the, um, multicolor yarn this one's subtle this one's like white with um with a beige and, um, this one i showed earlier it's got you know just a little two-tone thing going on so it makes it interesting and it's so soft i mean it, it the, okay here here's here's the story behind making these hats right i crochet i love to crochet and somehow one day I was in the craft store and I saw these looms and I was like, oh, okay, well, isn't that neat? Let me try that. So I did, you know, and, and then I started um, experimenting with different bulk yarn, you know, different weights. And I found um, Bernay, this Bernay, B-E-R-N-A-T, um, baby blanket yarn, okay. And um, 
it was just so incredibly soft. Well, the first couple of hats I made, I just thought were great. So what I ended up doing is um, at our um, at one of the um, cancer centers affiliated with the hospitals here. Um, is there's a cancer center nearby here, and um, oh gosh, uh, so many people I know have you know. Um, have had services by that um, the, that facility, and so I thought about these hats, and I thought about chemo patients, right? Oh, sure. Um, hold, um, yeah, Dar. Let me let me get to a point where I can, and I will. Hang on, just one second. But um, anyway, so. I gave, um, I talked to a shop that is located in the, um, in the cancer center. And it's a shop for women, uh, some males too, but mostly for women, like um, recovering from treatment and stuff. Like um, they sold wig, uh, wigs, a lot of different kinds of wigs and hats and, um, you know, um, breast prostheses and, and things of that nature. And so they took my hats and sold them um, for uh, promoting them for the cancer patients, the ones that had gone through chemo and lost all their hair. So um, that was kind of, um, um, you know, that it... it I felt good. So that that's how the hats came about. And uh, unfortunately, with the pandemic and everything else it created, um, the shop went away. <laughs> it's all I can say. So I don't have that outlet anymore. But it was the perfect spot, um, for sure. And um, because it was there, able to be accessed where the people who needed it were as well. So, okay, I'm going to switch colors here, show you how. All right, so I completed another row with this color. Okay, so now, simply, it, it's, and it, it's so easy, I'm going to cut this off. Okay. And then I'll use this because it's bright and different and will definitely stick out against um, the yarn that I'm using. Okay, where is the ending? Somewhere. There it is. There you are. Okay, and so... I'm going to take this little tail here that I cut off and take this one like so. <laughs> and I'm just going to tie them together in the same type of knot, the same half knot that I used on the first peg when we started this. Except it's double instead of um, single. Now I want to um, I want to pull this fairly tight, but um, not don't yank it too hard because you don't want the yarn to break. Basically, okay. But you do it tight because then I'm going to trim these pieces off. Okay, that I tie right. I'm going to trim these guys like so. Okay. And now you are connected. And you just keep on rolling with it now. Okay. So starting a new row. And it'll take a stitch or so before the new color 
becomes evident before it catches up here. Oh, it's catching up right there. All right, check it out. Oops. There we go. Oops, come on. Purple. That's Ravens purple. Ravens are Baltimore's football team. And they are playing today. They have a, a home game today. And, um, or was that yesterday? No, today, I think. And um, also our baseball team, the Orioles, they also have a game today. And that should be interesting because both stadiums, they both have their own stadium. And both stadiums are side by side pretty much. And while they have their own parking lots on three sides, on one side, they share one. and most times when there's a game, whichever stadium, you know, the game is, be it football or baseball, um, the, uh, um, oops, be it football or, or baseball, the parking lots are full to the max because most of, most of the games are sellout and actually not not everybody comes to the games in vehicles either. They only represent um, a fraction of the fan base. Baltimore has um, a pretty decent transit system. So public transportation uh, is um, preferred by many of the fans because then they don't have to worry about parking. The parking comes at a premium, you're going to pay for it one way or another. <laughs> okay, now we're on our second row of purple. Moving right along. Oops. I'm going to wrap this too tight. And see, this is what happens when you wrap too tight. It's kind of like a, a struggle to flip it. There we go. It's just that one piece, apparently. So, but yeah, I sit there and do this while I'm watching, you know, a show on television, a movie, what have you. It, uh, for me, it's relaxing. I like busy work. Okay, why is this stopping here? Okay, this is one of those. Weird things. Okay, come on. There we go. Take that. Ha. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sorry, this is kind of out of the. <laughs> okay, much better. Oops, maybe not. <clears throat> okay. Just give me enough to finish a couple rows here now, why don't you? Mm -hmm. This is my fault for um, not taking the time to take these skeins of yarn apart and roll them into balls. Much more manageable as a ball for sure. Much more so. All right, that looks good. Yes, that gives me enough. Okay, good, good, good. All right. Ashley, you still out there? Okay. So here we go. If um, you're just tuning in, or if you are um, catching this later, later time, uh, what I'm doing is showing the versatility of knitting looms. You can make so many different things with them, hats, scarves, different kinds of scarves, different kinds of hats, uh, ear warmers, uh, booties, a shawl, shawls, um, oh my goodness, different size hats like baby hats. So much you can do. 
I thought maybe you, know, you could probably do a rug actually by using that rectangular um, uh, the rectangular form that I used to make the shawl. That shawl could have been a rug, I suppose. Yeah, possible. <laughs> That's possible. But I love it too much as a shawl. As a shawl, oh my goodness, it is so warm and so comfortable. I adore it. Okay, we're moving along pretty good here. We're on another row of purple. As you can see, the difference is the purple coming up. So, yeah, it, it's real easy to change. You just uh, find, you know, a place. I, I do everything like that um, in between rows. Like, I always finish a row. I don't stop mid-row. I'll wait till I'm at the end or the beginning, but it's the same place. So it doesn't matter. And then, you know, if I'm going to change colors, well, I'll cut it off there before I start the next row. And then, um, and then just all you do is you just tie the new yarn, the new color onto the uh, a little tail that you left there when you cut the old color. And you just keep on going, you know, just turn back the, the ends that, you know, you used to tie it, being careful not to trim it back too much. You want to leave a little bit because you don't want that not separating midstream. That would probably be as close to a disaster as you could get. <laughs> I do believe. So we shall see. Uh, it's supposed to uh, I think it's supposed to rain this afternoon but so far so good it hasn't rained yet I don't know about all this rain we've been getting lately though earlier midweek the weather here was gorgeous the uh, uh, sun was shining the skies were blue you know uh, wispy clouds, not any dark clouds rolling in. Not yet. That happened yesterday. <laughs> the clouds came back and they are still with us. Darn it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be doing a new tour um, on the uh, Baltimore waterfront promenade. I think I'm going to do another row here, and then I'll show you how to take it off. Um, it's uh, they've expanded it. I, I've I've done um, I've done live streams from Baltimore's Inner Harbor, which is like you know was the start of the actual promenade. Now they've expanded it, and um, Baltimore is going through a Oh, a major revitalization there, you know, upgrading and improving and, and all kinds of things. And now that little promenade that used to uh, uh, be in front of a couple of uh, pavilions <clears throat> is when it's completed is to be eight miles long. It is, it, it's a promenade, a walkway that will um, follow the whole inner harbor all the way around. Right now it's just in portions, but eventually when it's done, and, and what that promenade comes with too is uh, lots of little things along the way, um, sitting areas, little parks, um, just just all, all types of um, things that are um, there for the tourists, the people walking by to, you know, give them a place to stop, rest, reflect, whatever. So anyway, it's grown a lot. And there's a lot of new promenade that's been completed. It's not all done. It's going to be years. But um, I, want, I, I want to do another promenade tour and go on over to the new area and show it off. So I want to uh, I want to be doing that fairly soon, hopefully. 
Peter P. We're still rocking here. As you can see, I mean, I can finish. Well, let me say I, I would finish a hat of, you know, a, a large hat in two days, basically. I allow two days because I don't do it all day long. You know, two days means however, however long I watch the television, two days, right? Because that's when I mostly would do it in front of, well, actually always. Um, so, yeah. Whoops. So, okay. I think that we can end this here. All right. Now, there is another tool that is an essential part of this scheme here. And it is it's a plastic needle. Like so. Okay, so that over here. We don't need this hook anymore. That way. Okay, now, all right, so pretend this is a whole hat, right? <laughs> and here is the end, and here is the peg where we started. So what I like to do is take the tail and wrap it around one and a half times. Might be a little wasteful, but I would rather waste a little bit than not have enough. Okay. Now, down here, these stitches that started the um, project are fairly loose. So you have to try to keep that same tension when you start lifting these stitches off. Okay. So, what I'm going to do. Thread my needle with the end of that yarn. Just kind of push it in there because it's bulky. Good thing it's got a big eye in the needle, right? Okay, so here we go. We have this, right? Okay. And so, all right, here's my setup. I am going, here. here's my um, um, starting knob. So I'm going to start. Um, I'm going to start here, here, <laughs> and and start lifting the yarn off. Okay, so and and threading it through. Okay, you're lifting it off and you're threading it through. And again and again, these um, grooves in the disc and uh, the pole are meant for this. So what I did, I just took this needle. And I lifted, I went through the first stitch and I'm pulling this through. Oops, don't get tangled. And lifting that stitch off. Okay. So here we go again. So that's what we're going to keep. That's what we're going to keep doing here. Okay, so we're going to push, and I always go under, okay, and try to keep it loose. You don't want to um, have the tension too tight because then you're going to have lopsided ends. This end that you started will be loose. Okay, so that's kind of the thing you have to watch out for, right? Okay, so I am pulling the needle through as it gets caught on other pegs. Um, watch for that because if you don't catch it, then there's going to be a gap in your hat. <laughs> okay. I wonder if I can put this down a little bit. Nope, wrong way. Ooh, golly, Miss Molly. Come this way. 
I don't, you don't need to see my face. You don't need to see my dress either. But wait a minute. <laughs> I want you to see this. The my uh, same place I started. All right, I give up. <laughs> I'm, I will. I will get this down one day. Right. One day I will have this as perfection. One day. Some day. Never know. Okay, yep, you're over there. Okay, yep, we're still good. Okay, and again, we're just going to keep going around and pulling the stitches up and off. And again, just pull it through lightly because you don't want this edge to be tight. It has to match um, the other one. The other side of the hat or coin or whatever. <laughs> okay, just cut through. <laughs> Oops, now I unthreaded. Fix that quick. Okay, we're coming along here. This one next. Next. It's it's really simple. And um the thing is I would I, I know that when you buy the looms they give you um addresses up uh, not address yeah well you yeah, have websites and stuff but they give you instructions you know it, com it comes with the looms and so you know you can see how really easy it is most definitely we're almost uh i must have it off of here now just a few more um stitches to flip there we go so fairly simple, very, and the end very um, appreciated too. I mean, who doesn't like a hat, right? Let's see, only a few more. You're seeing it better now, hopefully. I have to experiment more. Oops, here I came unthreaded again. Getting down to the um, getting down to the end of the yarn, so I don't have um, as long a lead pull through, which is why it um, comes out. There's not much of a lead left there, actually. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, we are just about there. Oops, no, 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 no. Okay. And there it goes. No. All right, so. All right, before I tie it off, okay, now this is going to be a, a, a baby headband, okay? <laughs> and um, I'm kind of opening up the stitches here on the end that I just did because I don't want one end to be tighter than the other. Okay. Let's see. Let's see, little baby. Let's see, it should go this way, I say. <laughs> a 
Whoops, sorry. <laughs> Let's turn, turn this around. Okay, look at that. There you go. Check her out. Ta da! <laughs> ta da, ta da, ta da. Okay. Now, if um, if you were making a hat, okay, instead of opening it up like I did, you want to bunch it up. You want to close the top. Okay. So very, very gently, you're going to pull. That string through. And as you do, you keep rotating, moving it, and moving it down to the opposite end, because this is going to be a big um, a big bunch thing, like <laughs> okay. See how it, it's closing, right? Like it's closing up. Let's move some of this around again. There we go. And keep pulling yarn. Mm -hmm. Pulling it. And we're about there. Okay. So there you have. <laughs> Cute, right? There you have the top end closed. Let's do this. <laughs> mm. Here we go. There's my little model. The little beanie. Okay. Ta -ta -ra. <laughs> to um to finish this. To finish this, um what I generally like to do is Come on, don't fail me now, you crazy thing. <laughs> okay, um, so I put the needle back on, and what, how I like to finish the hats is to take the needle, and I want to pull the string through to the other side where I'm going to knot it. That way you don't have the knot, you know, on top or, you know, spoiling the uh, the look, right? So here I am pulling it through all the way. Come on, the rest of you. Okay, pull it through and then just secure a knot any way that you choose. I usually um I usually take this and and thread it through one of the stitches. Uh Come on, give me a stitch. All right, one of the stitches, I just pull it through. Oops. <clears throat> okay. All right, so I'm pulling the stitch through like so, and then I'm just going to uh, go in there two, three times like so, and pull it through. Having fashioned a knot, yeah. Come on, knot. <laughs> anyway, knot in place, like so. And then I usually do another one of those. Famous little half knots and pull it all through like so. Try go through easier with that. And voila. There you have. Cut off this little guy too. Okay, now you have to use your imagination, okay? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. I, a warm yarmulke, right? This, this, I mean, wow. 
seriously, seriously, in wintertime, I have, and you could do it in like a solid color, like black or what have you, easy enough, right? Cool, very cool. All right, well, next one of these, I will show how to make, um, get it. ooh, uh, how to make this, <laughs> this big old thing here. It is a blanket, a chunky blanket, okay? It is the uh, big and fluffy and it can be warm or it can be air conditioned if you like it's got big stitches or it can be tighter stitches it can be whatever you make it whatever you want it to be okay now this is a bit expensive to make it takes five um five skeins of yarn oh let me put this back up here <laughs> I'm looking at my lips. So five skeins of yarn, and um, that's for like a for a, a maybe a twin or a double sized bed if you're going to put it on your bed. And the yarn is super, super, super bulky. This much, much, much bulkier than um, what we had before, and this one is a different type of yarn this is chanel yarn it's by mainstays mainstays chunky yarn chanel chunky yarn chunky yarn for chunky blankets okay this is um how many yards this one is 31 yards okay so you need five of these in order to um, make one of these blankets, okay? So, and it's super bulky, it's called. Super bulky. I'll show you again. <laughs> yeah, so we'll do this next time. I actually need to make a blanket, um, two of them, really. I've got, um, I've got this dark, turquoise that I bought to make a blanket and then I got this one and I was going to make two separate blankets but I don't know I'm kind of thinking and maybe somehow using both colors but I don't know what I want it to be yet so I can just wait until I get to it but yeah um I want to do that so I'll show you that that is so cool to make because you don't need anything but your yarn is called arm knitting of all things right but actually your your arm knitting <laughs> for sure so anywho all right guys well um dorley ashley who else is out there um thank you for joining me um i hope that i hope this was helpful uh, you know give you some ideas you know use your creativity you know i i for the show oh there i am what was that about um i'm home i always have a signal at hand <laughs> anywho this is my shawl and this shawl I mean, I just made on a whim. I just figured it out. And it's really nice and, and, and comfy and warm. And the other thing is that these, these photos I took in Ireland on the West Coast, and I fell in love with it. And this is the colors in these photographs. So I had the color. I, I wrapped myself in the Irish countryside every time i use my shawl which is going to be a lot more often now that autumn is coming so anywho thank you guys um yeah hopefully you'll find it thoroughly if not like i said email me and i'll help you look i'll look on this end and see you know you never know maybe we might be able to get something you know shipped from maybe uh, another store over in europe who knows so you know 
it'd be educational to find out, right? <laughs> All right, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. And um, I'll see you tomorrow at the Renaissance Festival. Woohoo! <laughs>